the, the, the full court game gave us a chance to um, to recover one or two of the, the players that had little niggles, like I said, before the game and uh, give the opportunity for other players to come in. So, uh, But yeah, he's, he's trained all week and been good. It's not a challenge. No, I always think these are games of perspective and it's how you how you look at them. Um, for me and, and the other players and that, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's the next game. So we want to win the next game. Um, and that is always the challenge of being a Celtic player and, and being a manager. Um, we understand the, the Champions League and it's it's fantastic, but but ultimately this is the bread and butter that gets you there. So, um, so this is an important game for us, really important, and it's our only real focus at this moment. Hello again, everybody. A warm welcome back. Um, we're going to go over the news, any latest news, rumours, gossip. We're going to go through the St Johnston preview as well. We've got John to go through all that with us. How are you doing today, John? I am all right. Xander, how's yourself? Yeah, I, I'm very good. After last night, the Celtic ladies getting through to the Champions League proper. It was brilliant. I've put a couple of wee videos on. I'll put the link in the description if they wants to see it. Just have a wee look. Uh, just outstanding for the ladies, John. And a very convincing victory as well to put Celtic into the last 16 group stages. Uh, it was a bit of a, a hard shift for them, to be honest with you. I watched the game and I thought, this is... This is a hard game for these lasses. They did. They put a hell of a lot into that game. Thoroughly enjoyable game to watch. Uh, I can't remember what that team was called, but they were they were a half decent team. A good test for them. Um, ah, look, fair fair play to the lasses. They did well. Really enjoyable game. Fantastic result. Three 0 in aggregate. That same through to the last 16 uh, group stages. I don't know if the uh, women's champions leagues are a bit different for the men's champions league, but uh, into the group stages they go. Fantastic. Uh, and commiserations to the, the, the other B team because I thought they were quite a good team and they also play in the green, which is good to see. Yeah, that's right, John. They do. Uh, they, they, were, they were a very tough team as well, weren't they, to be honest with you? But uh, it's the ladies that go through for Celtic. That's the main thing. That that's um, that's all we were looking for. And it's an extra nearly half a million pound um, for the Celtic ladies to build the squad as well to make them even stronger into it. So that's that's a bonus as well. Let's let's get into the some of the housekeeping and then we'll move on. John, hit that notification bell to get your notifications for any videos that are upcoming. We'll send you a notification. So just strike the notification bell. Uh, subscribe as well if you can please that would be appreciated because the, subscri <laughs> the subscriptions are going up and then they're coming down and then they're going up I don't, under I don't understand it um, but if you can hit that subscribe button uh, John and myself would both appreciate that and if you can like hit the like button as well right John uh, let's get into some Celtic related news if you like um, it's not all Celtic news but this is mostly Celtic related um, uh, the St Johnston Manager's position, John Brun uh, Brunet is no longer interested in it. John, they've had he's had two approaches from St Johnston. It's St Johnston, he's knocked both those approaches back. He's uh, withdrawn his name from the hat, John. So there'll be no Scott Brown in charge of St Johnston at the weekend. Uh, I did say that. I did say it's uh, St Johnston. They're a trouble club. I don't think they're a. They're no, you know, if any manager's looking to get into managing a team and they look at St Johnston fighting relegate. Look, it's a good prospect for a young manager like Scott Brown. But I think Scott's cutting his teeth and he's enjoying his time at Air United. I think he wants to see if he can bring them up to the Premier League proper. By himself, I don't think he's looking to just, you know, leapfrog into the Premier League straight away. Look, big respect to Scott Brown. He's basically, put his, wears his heart on his sleeve, didn't he? He's saying... Look, I've joined Air United. I'm going to be loyal to this club. They've gave me a chance. So I'm going to stick it out, see what I can do with them. And you've got to take your heart off them for that, Xander. For, you know, you don't get that level of loyalty at many, with many players and managers these days. So uh, I, I think that's a, I think it's the right move for Scott Brown. I, I'd rather he went to a decent club after he's proved his uh, worth as a manager. Yeah, and I think Bruni agrees with you as well, John. I think that's exactly what he's doing. He's going to hang around at Air United and uh, sort of get his teeth in at Air United, get himself known that way. So, yeah, yeah, 
Well done to Brunei. He stays put at Air United. Uh, for the game at the weekend, John Andy Kirk, he's in temporary charge at St Johnston. So that's who we're up against, Andy Kirk, on Saturday night. He's the caretaker manager until they get a, a permanent manager in place. A wee quick word on the Hearts position as well, John, before we move on. Um, Stephen Robinson of... Uh, Who's he at? Stephen Robinson. <laughs> is it Murray or St Mirren? I can't remember. Anyway, Stephen Robinson. <laughs> St Mirren, I. Is it, uh, uh, Stephen Robinson, he's the, the bookish favourite now for the Hearts position, John. And Alex Neal was a close second. So, uh, Stephen Robinson, he is a decent manager, Stephen Robinson. I think he would do well at Hearts. Uh, I know I always say that, eh? But I'm just, I'm kind of gobsmacked at the, the options that sees. I think Robinson should stay where he is at St Mirren, to be honest with you. I think he's doing a, doing a good job at St Mirren. St Mirren played a, a decent football, and I don't think he's going to get any better at the Hearts players, to be honest with you. I know Hearts, maybe they've got slightly better players than St Mirren, but he's not going to take them any further, to be honest with you. So he'd be as well staying put, unless it's uh, a big money increase for, for him, you know, like a big wage increase, but... If no, I think he's better off staying where he is. Mm. Yeah, it's a poisonous chalice, that Hearts job, isn't it, John? Uh, I don't know why I spent too much time on that, obviously, but just thought it was worth mentioning that Neil Lennon is nowhere near that job, to be honest with you. I mean, we, we both did say that on the last podcast, didn't we, that Neil Lennon would be nowhere near that job. Um, so that's your favourites, Stephen Robinson and Alex Neil for the Hearts job. Um, but obviously that could be totally um, way off as well. Uh, just the, the next game, John, the next game, Celtic against Hearts, just speaking of Hearts, um, that's one that I've been looking forward to. I'm, I'm going to try and get that one. Uh, the B team, hint B team against Hearts. So anybody that's interested, that's a quarter past seven kickoff tonight. I think it may be on Celtic TV. I'm not too sure, but you'll get it somewhere if you look hard enough, John. I forgot about that game, I, um, I, I'll, I'll definitely watch that if I can find it. You should be able to find that somewhere. Sometimes I've see, even seen them games on uh, YouTube, Sander, free of charge. Yeah, that's it. Uh, sometimes they pop up on YouTube, don't they? So, yeah, keep your eye open. And, uh, it'll be a, a decent wee game. Looking forward to it. It'll be always uh, a good game. Any game between Celtic and Hearts is always a good game, isn't it? Um, all right, John, let's get into the big preview then, St Johnston. The big match, the big one. We're back to league football. You know, it's uh, after the cup game at the weekend and the, the Champions League game before that. We're back to league business on Saturday. Um, a late evening kickoff into this one, 5.45. So it's a funny kickoff, I guess, because the game's on Premier Sports. So 5.45 kickoff. Obviously, Aberdeen played before that, John. I think we'll, we'll be sitting in second place by the time we kick off against St. Johnson. I think so, I. I don't, I don't know. You don't know where Aberdeen, the pressure might get to them, you know. <laughs> They've got this chance to go top, the pressure might get to them, who knows. They've not been in that position before, so uh, no in recent years anyway, but uh, we'll wait and see. Yeah, that's it. Uh, they play Dundee, obviously, don't they? So uh, we can only wait and see that. So, uh, but we kick off uh, after Aberdeen, and uh, let's get into it then, John. This 4,390 tickets we're getting for that one, so... Um, it's still a decent allocation, isn't it? 4,390 tickets. That seems like quite a lot to me. Ah, it's a fair amount. That's, uh, that's a good uh, a good attendance of Celtic supporters there. Aye. I'm looking forward to it, by the way. I've been looking forward to the league games starting back again. Uh, can't wait. I'm just looking, I look forward to every Celtic game, but league games in particular, I always look forward to them the most, Sander. That's, I keep saying it and I'll say it again. That's the bread and butter. That's all that matters to me, the league, and getting to the last 16 in the Champions League, if possible, which, you know, it's a long shot, but it's no beyond, beyond Celtic's capabilities to get to the last 16. But the league's the most important thing. Yeah, that definitely is. Uh, and that's where we're back on Saturday in the league, league business. Uh, Don Robertson's a ref for this one, and Alan Muir is on the VAR, so that's your their officials for the big match on Saturday. Obviously, I've already mentioned, John, they're without a manager. They've, they've got Andy Kirk stepping in um, as deputy manager. Um, 
they've got all sorts. We're going to get through the team lineup, so the news team team news in a wee minute, John. But I've got a few players out, etc. John, I know with a manage, manager, but these are normally the games that you struggle in. Uh, going back, going by games in the past, you know, teams with no manager, uh, they always play a wee bit better. So again, like we said last week against Falkirk, we're going to have to be very wary. Aye, well, they're no propping up the table like Hearts and Kilmarnock. You've got to remember that they're, they're no propping up the table, but I, you've got to be wary of every single team in the SPL because you don't know what their tactics are, what they've been planning behind the scenes. Probably been watching Celtic for a month leading up to this. Um, but we'll wait and see, wait and see what happens. But I, it can prove a difficult ground sometimes, uh, McDermott Park. So I, I'm really looking forward to it though. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Uh, it's uh, just a wee quick word on the thing, John, by the way, the Celtic couple of potential injury doubts, but I think they'll be okay. Carter Vickers picked up on that knock, obviously, but could be okay or should be okay for St. Johnson and Alistair as well. Alistair Johnson, um, he picked up a niggle as well, but both are doubts, but both should be okay, John, so we're hoping uh, we've got a full team to pick from on Saturday. If there's any... Uh risk of injury to the players if they're carrying a niggle I think they'll be rested uh, because I think Brendan's wanting to have a full strength team for Tuesday against Dortmund I think Brendan may be looking at that as the bigger of the two games I mean a lot of Celtic, most Celtic fans in fact will be looking at that as the most important game the Dortmund game um, but me personally it's getting points in the bag for the league that's always the most important to me. Don't get me wrong, I'd love to see a wee win in Dortmund. That would be fantastic. A wee draw. Win or a draw, I don't really care. But uh, to me, it's all about the league. It always has been. Yeah, I mean, we can, we can. Uh, I mean, the Champions League game is, you know, this is, that to me, I'm the same as you, John, this is, this is just as big. Beating St. Johnston Saturday is just as big. A chance to go eight points clear of um, Rangers. And uh, depending on what happens with Aberdeen, we just we also need to keep in touch with Aberdeen as well, don't we? So it's a massive game, John. It really is, um, especially putting that extra bit of pressure on Rangers because they've got a which should be a tricky tie against Hibs. But we know what we know what normally happens with Rangers and Hibs. Rangers always get the result, especially at Ibrox. But uh, it's a chance to put a wee bit of pressure on them, on them John, with, with a win against St Johnston. Uh, and Luke McGowan, John, he's. He's back from his, um, he was cup tied at the weekend, wasn't he, Luke McGowan? So um, he's back in contention as well. So it looks as though we've got uh, a 100%, 100% sorry, fully fit squad to pick from, all being well with Carter Vickers and Johnson. Well, that's the big two, isn't it, Carter Vickers and Johnson? Uh, like I say, I think Brendan will be looking at the Dortmund game and thinking I'd rather keep the two fit for that game rather than risk him against St. Johnson, which I think is folly. The league's the most important thing. Uh, I, but look, it's good to have a full squad to pick from, uh, but I think there'll be changes again, Xander. Yeah, yeah, John, right. Okay, we'll get to that very soon. Um, uh, because I think it'll be a full, a fully, I think it'll be like the team that started in Champions League. But we'll get to that, John. We'll, that's, that's interesting. Uh, so, Johnson, as you said a couple of minutes ago, they're sitting 10th in the league, just above Hearts and Kamarnock, I think it is. So they're sitting 10th, they're still quite lowly, John, without a manager. Um, it, it just makes for an interesting game, as I say, John, because I think teams without managers seem to play better. Once the shackles are released from the manager, they're busy getting uh, the best out of the players, they, they, they normally turn it around quite quickly. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, I really am. St. Johnson, five losses in a row, John. Um, apart from the 3-3 draw last week, before that, the... They had five losses in a row, John, and then a 3-3 draw with Ross County. So uh, they sort of picked it up in the last game there, a 3-3 draw, but it wasn't enough to stop Craig Levine getting the sack, was it? No, the man that appeared from nowhere. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he did, didn't he? Yeah. Um, one minute he was lying in his hospital bed, and the next minute he was in charge of St. Johnston. <laughs> so, I don't understand that one. That one. That's a funny one, wasn't it? Uh, Craig Levine. Good luck to Craig Levine. Good luck to the guy. Uh, he had his heart attack and all that and went back into managing again, which was I thought was brilliant him doing that. So Carl yeah. can say to big Craig Levine is all the best to you, Craig. 
your health's the most important thing, mate. And I'm sure you'll find another big job somewhere else. Yeah, of course, yeah, well, John, he is a decent manager. He's, he's, he's always been there and thereabouts. I mean, he even managed Scotland at one point, didn't he? But he's just fit as a flea, John. Don't worry about him. He's he's back to normal. Uh, but good luck to Craig, as you say, John. He's a, he's a decent big guy, Craig Levine, isn't he? So, anyway, uh, let's back, get back to the game. Uh, John, May 2016 was the last time St. Johnson actually beat us. So, you're talking about that eight years, nearly nine years ago, the last time they beat us. So the form is definitely against St Johnston and for Celtic. So, but I know that goes for nothing. It's just something I thought I would bring up, John. That's nearly nine years ago. The last time we got a result against us. Aye, that's a long time ago. Uh, St Johnston, they are a trouble club. They're they're always struggling down there. Always changing managers or what, what have you. But they have got a wee win in them, and don't forget they did win a league and cup double. In the COVID season, which was, uh, I was very happy for them doing that. But uh, I don't know. If Celtic show up with a full squad, it's going to be, uh, you know, basically game over for St. Johnson. But I don't think Celtic are going to show up with a full squad. That doesn't mean I'm saying that I think Celtic's going to lose points. I just think there's going to be changes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Johnson's forum, John, lost, won, lost, 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 drawn. So, no, in great forum, Celtic obviously have won every game in the last, well, since last season, really, isn't it? So, uh, Celtic in terrific forum in every competition. Let's, uh, let's touch on St Johnston's team news then, John. Like Pizu and McClelland are both injured. So, two of the main players are out injured, John. Like Pizu and McClelland. And that's definitely, John, they're definitely missing the game on Saturday. And striker Kirk is injured as well, John. So Kirk injured as well. So that's three of their main players injured. Uh, Benjamin Mbunga, he's suspended, John. He got a red against Hibs last time out. So they're definitely ravaged with suspensions and injuries as well, John. Aye. Well, that's good news for Celtic. That Kirk's no other captain, is he? <laughs> 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 Terrible. <laughs> 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 uh, no, I'm sorry, I'll give you that. I'm okay. Um, but uh, John, that's five players, uh, first team players, John, they've got out. Um, so I can only board well, as you say, for Celtic. Um, Captain Kirk, brilliant. Uh, <laughs> it's the, you say the, the, uh, the manager's called Kirk as well, the stand in manager. Yeah, Andy. Kirk's. Andy Kirk, I don't know, it might even be the same Kirk, John, I don't know, <laughs> don't know. Um, but John, that's t- to me, that the ravaged with injuries and suspensions, uh, they're without a manager, you know, it's, it should only point to one result, but, you know, you worry about saying things like that, because we've seen, you know, stranger things happen in the past, Celtic going to places like McDermott Park and coming away with a draw. Aye, aye, we have, we definitely have, uh, some people going about, I was watching that thing yesterday about Celtic's finances, that English guy talking about how uh, wealthy Celtic are right now. And somebody's leaving in the comments. Uh, well, that I don't know if you know the guy I'm talking about. Quite a fat guy, English. He's kind of a financial expert on clubs. And, right. he says, and he said Celtic get a free pass and at the Champions League. Where's the free pass? No, I don't know, John. Um, for anybody to say that, they, uh, you must not know what you're talking about, you know, free pass into the Champions League, because you win the league out proper in your country, and because of the coefficient, uh, you gain automatic qualification into the Champions League. How is that a free pass? You have to work hard all season to win the league and get into the Champions League, John. I but all the comments were off. All the people, uh, they were angry at him saying that it's a free pass. Look, uh, that just... That just came from that comment about you saying it can be tough against any team in Scotland. We could go there the more, possibly get a draw, possibly drop points. Nobody knows. It's a living guys against a living guys. And it all depends on who's the hungry. Celtic have maybe got the better players. That's fair enough. But look, you can't just show up and win these games. You've got to fight to win every single game you play in in Scotland. If people can't see that, they shouldn't be calling themselves experts. 
No, who calls them experts? And they probably call themselves experts. You know, it's a total nonsense, to be honest with you. Celtic have to fight and battle for every point they get in this league, John. It's no easy games. There's no gimmies when it comes to Celtic, especially, John. Every team's out there to beat the champions. So, yeah, we work hard. We won the league and we go into the Champions League. Bottom line, John. 14-1 to St. Johnston to win. On Saturday night, 14 to 1, John. Massive price there for St. Johnson at home. Uh, Celtic are 2 to 11. I make that roughly about 1 to 5. So, again, yet again, the, the bookmakers are just making Celtic hot, hot, hot favourites there, John. Aye, and rightly so. Um, but like we were saying, you don't know what can happen, especially at away grounds like McDermott Park. You just don't know what can happen. But Aye, the bookies are right to point Celtic out as favourites with the squad that, that we've got and the fact that, that they're the form team in Scotland right now. They're winning everybody that's... They're, beat, sorry, they're beating everybody that's put in front of them right now. So, aye, it's only right that Celtic should be favourites. And, uh, aye, bring it on. Yeah, bring it on, John. And uh, just before we go on, uh, a couple more wee bits of odds but the bookmakers think of Celtic's chances and St Johnson's chances competition time just uh, the video's there in the descriptions I say but if you don't want to watch the video we're looking for the correct score against St Johnston and we're also looking for a goal scorer any goal scorer in the game so correct score and a goal scorer one guess each in the comment section to win the Celtic themed still game metal ball plaque that's a lot John that's a miffy and a half that isn't it um, but that's the prize uh, that's up for grabs one guess each into the comments John um, We'll get your guess in a wee minute, John. But um, plenty of entries already. We've got plenty of entries already. It's on Facebook. It's on YouTube as well, just in case anybody is wondering. Um, and good luck to everybody in the competition. Yep, good luck, everybody. Still game wall plaque. It's pretty, quite nice. I think Xander's going to send me one of them, actually, as well. Um, aye. I've seen them in action. They look pretty nice. Yeah, very nice, John. And it, John, uh, and I'm serious, if you want one, you can have one. You're the main part of the podcast, it's not a problem. <laughs> anyway, uh, just send me your address. <laughs> uh, you uh, don't get much you don't get much action out of a wall plaque, but you know what I mean. <laughs> you don't know. No, no, you certainly do not. But they look lovely, they look really nice, and they're top, top quality as well. I mean, add Kyogo, 17-5 to score first, either 7-2-2. Seven, seven two, two. Kuhn, 11 to 2. By the way, I think Kuhn's a potential player of the season, but we'll get to that later on. Maida, 6 to 1 to score the first goal. Uh, a couple of wee outsiders. Uh, who else? We've got Bernardo, 10 to 1. If you fancy Bernardo, to even start the game. Uh, I don't know. John, it's... Bernardo's played well. I think he's been really unlucky. You no know, getting a start. Where do you think Bernardo's chances are starting? I think he's got a good chance of starting the more Rosanda. I do, I think he's got a good chance. I think there's going to be a few uh, changes again. And I think Bernardo's in with a shout of starting. Look, like the boy thoroughly deserves it, like he says. Every game he's performed in so far this season, he's played well. So I, I think he deserves a start. Yeah, so there, are, John. He's, he's, I mean, I liked him last year. Everybody liked him last season, but you just saw the ability the boy had. And he started this season brilliant. Anytime he's been in the park, he's looked really good. Callum McGregor, 14-1 to score the first goal. Alistair Johnson, 28-1 to score the first goal, John. So that's your outside bets for the first goal scorer. Um, all right, John, let's move on then. Uh, prediction 11 time. You think there's going to be some changes? I don't think there's going to be some changes. What are you thinking then, John? What's your predicted 1-11? to 11? Tough one, very tough one. But I think the two players that you mentioned at the start could possibly be rested. Alistair Johnson and Carter Vickers. So I think it's going to be scales. I think he's going to start. Greg Taylor, Casper Smeko, of course. Trusty instead of Carter Vickers. And Anthony Ralston instead of Alistair Johnson. Centre of the park, Bernardo instead of Ingles. Callum McGregor will start. Rio Hitati will start. I think Maeda's going to start. Kyogo's going to start. And Nicholas Coon's going to start. It's not a very strong team, isn't it, John? But yeah, it's, I think both Vickers and Johnson will fit. John, I think they'll be okay to start. So I'll go with Smeichel and Goals, Vickers and Scales, 
in the centre-back positions, Greg Taylor and Alastair Johnson, uh, your wing-backs, uh, Callum in the holding role. I'm going to go with Engels and Hitati. John, I think Engels and Hitati will start with Maeda, Kyogo and Kuhn up front. So both teams are very strong. I just think there'll be a few changes. You've got to remember, this game's on Tuesday, Xander, so there's only two days rest in between, you know, St. Johnson and uh, Dortmund. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. It's a hard one to say. Look, they're two strong teams, but with two days, two days rest in between a Champions League game away from home against last season's Champions League finalists, I think there'll be rest rested players, Xander. I, I, I could be wrong, but I just think that, that's the way I'm thinking right now. It's actually a very good point, John. You know, the Champions League game is only a few days later, isn't it? So, you know, Brendan may, may surprise us all and play another weekend team. I think it'll be as weak a team as where it was last weekend. But yeah, but there is potential there for a few players to be rested, to be honest with you. But yeah, John, I just think he's going to go with a full squad. It's a vital three points, isn't it? So, um, I think he's going with a full squad, to be honest with you. Um, all right, John, a wee score prediction after you then. Um, it's obviously a wee bit tougher away from home, isn't it? Unless we get an early goal, then it settles the nerves. Things are always looking a wee bit better after an early goal. Uh, what are you thinking, John, a wee score prediction after you? Again, we don't know what the starting lineup's going to be, so it's very hard to predict it when you don't know the starting lineup. But yep. if he does go with a, a weakened team, which I think he will, I think he will rest a few players, I'm going to say 3-0 Celtic. 3-0. Um, I'm going to go 13-2 for a 3 nothing Celtic win, John. That's your, 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 your pricing on that. Gamble responsible, obviously. This is just a bit of fun. That's why we do that. Just to, uh, we would just we just want a wee idea what the bookies think of Celtic's chances. That's why we do it. We don't do it for any betting side of things. It's just to get an idea of, of the pricing on Celtic um, for anybody that's interested. I think it'll be 2 nothing, John. I think it'll be uh, quite a close dog of affair again. I hope I'm wrong. I hope we wipe the flower, to be honest with you. Um, but no, nah, I think it'll be close. 2 nothing. I'm going with John. So that's six, priced at 6 to one Right, fair enough. I do think it's. I don't think it's going to be a, uh, one of these rampant school lines five nothing or anything like that. I'm not thinking that way. I'm th I'm, I'm thinking quite close two three nothing. Uh, but I'll stick with three because you went with two. Yep, John. Sorry, John. You broke up again now, John. It happens quite a lot on this stream yard, didn't it? But uh, I got the gist of what you were saying. Uh, so two nothing and three nothing. Anyway, that's that's uh, that's our predictions. Get your predictions into the comments, folks, and in with the competition as well with your correct goal scorer or any time goal scorer, sorry. Uh, get your competition entries into the comments and good luck, everybody, with that. Right, John, that wraps it up for me in regards to the, the preview of the St. Johnson games. Is anything you want to add? No, really, no. I think we've covered everything. Just, I think there's going to be changes the more, and I, I think it's going to be a close game. I, think, I don't think St. Johnson are going to come out swashbuckling attack Celtic or anything I just think it's going to be a close scoreline if you like so I, I'm just it's going to be a win by two or three goals for Celtic I think yeah anyone John into it absolutely anyone one nothing five nothing it doesn't matter as long as we get the three points in the bag and then we can start thinking about Bruce Dortmund so that's that's the way I'm looking at it John um, but uh, the European game you know, that was actually a good point that uh, that may be playing on the, the players' minds. I hope not. I hope they're professional like they always are and they do a professional job against Johnston and then they start thinking about the game in midweek. But, John, it's, uh, it doesn't always work out like that. These these Champions League games, you know, they, they can play a big part in the season, especially when it comes to uh, away games. They certainly can, I. Uh, like, like I keep saying, the league, the league is our bread and butter. That's vital that we get the points in the bag. Uh, we can worry about Borussia Dortmund when we get there, but I, I just think there's going to be some changes, J just because the game's a couple of days later. It isn't even midweek, it's the start of the week. Yeah, Tuesday isn't it? Tuesday kick-off, late kick-off, 8 o'clock on Tuesday. Aye, 
But there you go. That's that's what I think anyway. I just think it's going to be a couple of changes because the game's only a couple of days later. So, uh, aye. We'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. Quarter to six tomorrow. Premier Sports. Looking forward to it. Yeah. That's it, John. Okay. Let's run through some of the, oh, sorry, the rest of the fixtures in the SPO then, John, for the weekend. We've got Dundee against Aberdeen. We've already mentioned that. Be quick prediction from you, John. Uh, uh, 2 0 Aberdeen. I'll say 2 1 Aberdeen since they're away from home. Hearts, Ross County. Hearts with no manager. Ross County near the bottom of the league, isn't they? Sitting about seventh or something. Eighth. Hearts, Ross County, John. 1 1. Yeah. 2 1. Ross County. Uh, come on, look, Dundee United. Tough game for the Arabs, that one. Uh, but Dundee United sitting, I don't know where they are now, fifth or something like that in the table, fourth or fifth. I'm going to say 2-2. Two, 2-2. Two. Two, two. Um, the old Desmond, as <laughs> big Derek Johnson used to say, old Desmond 2-2. Two, two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to say 1-0 to Kamarnock. Uh, Motherwell, St Mirren. Mm, I'm going to go for a Motherwell win there. I'm going to say 3 1 Motherwell. Uh, 2 0 Motherwell. I think Motherwell are playing okay just now, aren't they? So I'll say 2 0 Motherwell, John. Okay. The, the final game, obviously, is the big one on Sunday, if you can call it a big one. It's going to be a walkover as far as I'm concerned. Rangers, Hibs, John. Uh, 2 0 Rangers. Aye, aye. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a Rangers win. I don't know what the score will be. I'll say three nothing, just to be different. Um, okay, let's get on to Bruni Watch. John Bruni Watch is knocked back the job. But we said at the very top of the program, he's knocked back the job. But St Johnson twice. In fact, they contacted him twice. He said no twice. <laughs> it's if once wasn't enough. Uh, so he's back in action at home against Morton. Very tough game for Air United against Morton John in the Championship. So, Brainy, watch for this week, John. What are you thinking? Air United against Morton? Uh, anyway, Scott Brown's uh, Air United against Morton. Uh, Morton are a half decent team. They always, I think they always give Air United a decent game. Is it a home or a bit? It's at home, John. It's an Air United's wee ground. So, it's it's a home game for them. But it's a very tough green at Morton. Very tough. Aye, it's a tough game, aye. Uh, but, since it's at home, I'm going to say a narrow win for Bruni's Air United. I'm going to say 1-0 Air United. Right, OK. 1-0 Air United. I'll say 2-0. Two, 2-0. Two no, 2-1. I'll change it to 2-1 because Morton are a decent team. So, very tough. We just want to see Bruni get back into winning ways because his last couple of outings has been a couple of draws, isn't it? Um, so, we'll, we'll park that there, John. That's Bruni. Watch um, the Air United manager, I might add, not the St. Johnson manager. Um, incidentally, John Brusher Dortmund they play tonight. They get their game a day earlier, so no such joy for the Celtic lads. They get to play the game late on a Saturday, and then have to go and play Brusher Dortmund on a Tuesday. It's unbelievable, isn't it? So Dortmund they play the night, John. They play Bochum tonight uh, at home. So we're hoping for a wee Bochum win there. Nothing against Dortmund. We just want them to be in, on the lowest possible morale. Aye, of course. Aye, I know they get beat. Was it 5 1? You says they get beat last week. That was a bit of a scalping, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, Stuttgart, John beat them 5 1. Yeah. Aye, aye, well, that's all good. Uh, but the Dortmund fans have got a good relationship with the Celtic fans. Yeah. From memory, when Celtic Park first got built, I remember, you know, before they built the stands behind the goals, it was just the North Stand that was a. You remember that? Yeah, John, you sort of broke up there. The stand behind the goals was what? Sorry, can you repeat that? No, I'm just saying when Celtic Park got built, it was just the north stand that was there originally, and then they built the stands behind the goals. Aye? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, remember that. And I was at a European game watching Celtic and Borussia Dortmund were playing at Ibrox the next night. But a lot of their fans were in with the Celtic fans, all celebrating and all that stuff. Yeah. Singing Rangers songs and all that. Singing songs about Rangers. They weren't singing Rangers songs. They were singing songs about Rangers, the Dortmund fans. Uh, yeah. And they were mixing brilliantly with the Celtic fans. That was my first time in Celtic Park when they first opened it. 
just the north stand was open to remember it the 20 odd year ago the memories yeah. under yeah yeah john it's uh they've got a great early relationship with the celtic supporters to be honest with the brochure documents um and it's going to be it's going to be a good turnout there for the celtic fans in germany on tuesday night i'm really looking forward to that one as well to be honest with you but uh that they play tonight anyway john they get that extra day would you think of that not much i can say about that Xander. that's just the way it is isn't it uh would you, would you make a the SPL no help himself to get giving them the extra days rest? Um, but all these other countries seem to do it, didn't they? Uh, it is what it is, and I just need to get on with it. It's as simple as that. But anyway, let's go on with the comments. Mm -hmm. uh, first up, we've got uh, Stephen Bell. And Stephen says, Class as usual, great podcast and brilliant ending. Hail, hail. Yeah, thanks, Stephen. Uh, a new comment. I'm getting a lot of new commenters in now, John. It's brilliant. It's good to see, as well as all of our regulars, just uh, combining all the commenters together. It's really good to see Stephen Bell. Yeah, the end, John, the wee poem from Lisbon Girl was really good, wasn't it? She, she done really well um, with that poem. And uh, then we put it at the end of the video, didn't we, with, with your version of The Fields of Athen Rye. And the two of them went, went really well together, John. Hi. Ah, it's okay, I suppose, I the wee tune, I mean, the, the wee poem was lovely, I I'm no one for poetry, but like I said before, if it involves Celtic, I love all things Celtic, and we really appreciated that poem, Lisbon Girl. Anyway, speaking of Lisbon Girl, she was up with a comment, and she says, thank you for the shout-outs and lovely comments, Andrew and John. I love your version of the feels of Athen Rye, John, thanks for that. She says, I've published a couple of times, I've been, sorry, I've been published a couple of times, and two poetry books, and another one I signed the rights over to the big issue. That's the magazine. Uh, but that was a wee quickie. I'll try to do one every now and again, but I love the feedback. Thank you, Charas. As per great podcast, boys, keep up the good work. Yeah, nice wee comment from Lisbon Girl. She appreciates, uh, you know, she does appreciate her, John, for making the poem, you know, but she appreciates, appreciates us putting it on with the, the, the wee tune at the end. So, uh, it was really nice. It was, I really enjoyed it. I'm going to put it on at some point in this video as well because I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I appreciate that, Lisbon Girl. And uh, keep the comments coming in as well, pal. It's always good to have you on the channel. It certainly is. It's good to see you here, Lisbon Girl. Uh, and we're glad to see you. I think you'll be a reg regular contributor from now on. I certainly hope so. Yeah, I hope so. Hope that's right, John. Yeah. Thank you, Lisbon hey, Girl. Uh, thanks, Lisbon Girl. Uh, next up is James Doran. James says, no way Neil Lennon would manage Hearts after all the abuse he got when he was manager of Celtic. I don't think he would ever manage Hearts. I mean, I say I would welcome Neil Lennon going to Hearts, but I certainly don't think Neil Lennon would take that job after the abuse he got. I, I, I agree with you there, James. Aye? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not over yet. He could still be the manager, John. We, we're only going by uh, what the bookies think, you know. The bookies don't really know anything when it comes to new managers. So he could still be, he could still be in the running, but I can't see it happening myself. To be perfectly honest, with you, there's too much where uh, went on in the past there, John Hunter. So, yeah, I think it's going to be maybe the, the names we mentioned earlier would be the front runners for that job. I think um, Robinson and Alex Neil, etc., people like that, John. But uh, no, no, I'm sure Neil Lennon will find another job quite soon. Ah, I'm, I'm sure he will. Uh, thanks for that, James. Uh, Good, James. Peter Hendry was up next. Peter says, lovely wee poem to end the podcast. The boys, 5-0 to win, Kuhn to score. 5-0 in Kuhn, that's... Um, yeah, so we've got to remember that the team is flying, John. Just because we rested players at the weekend there and the performance wasn't as great, but that's going to be back to more or less a full strength on Saturday night. So, yeah, it could be a five, it could be. So, good luck with your guests and good luck with the competition. Hi, thanks for that. Um... Who's up next? I'm trying to remember that guy's name there, Peter Hendry. Thanks, Peter. Um, yeah. Kev's up is up next. He says 4 0 and Engels to score the first goals. Thanks for that, Kev's up. Yes, Kev's up. Good luck, pal. Udif says 5 0 to Celtic, Maida to score. And he says it's a great bedtime podcast. Let's stick it on the pillow and relax. Hail, hail. Uh, it's our soothing voices, John. Especially mine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the comment. Good luck with the competition, you uh, Another re regular, John. Another uh, commenter, always on the channel. So we appreciate that, you Thanks very much. 
I know it's your voice went all deeper there when you say especially mine. Sexy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, hardly bad, eh, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying hard. <laughs> uh, uh, thanks, you, Dave. Thanks for that, Paul. Uh, we need to eat a few more Big Macs to uh, look like Barry White, right, Sander. I'll get a good go. <laughs> <laughs> it's no, it's no keep... stop to in the past. No, <laughs> I'll keep you informed by how I get on. <laughs> Uh, anyway, Paul McCune says, hail, hail. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Cheers, Paul. Uh, Lisbon Girl's got another poem. I'll leave that to the end. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Lisbon uh, Girl. We'll get, that. we'll get that very soon. Uh, Fuji Stoner says, 4-0. Celtic and Kyogo to score. Uh, Kyogo, yeah. Uh, we missed them last weekend, didn't we? Yeah. yeah good luck with your guests. Um, good, good luck with everybody in the competition, in fact. Uh, it's, it's a good one, that, John, because... I think people are enjoying the correct score and a goal scorer. I think people are enjoying it. So good luck everybody with that. Uh, anyway, thanks for G Stoner. Next up was one club. He says 3 0 and Hitati to score. Yeah, good luck. 3 0 Hitati. Yeah, I hope so. I hope it's anyone, anyone going to care less if it's an own goal. And by the way, and by, sorry, John, by the way, it can be a St. Johnston player. It doesn't need to be a Celtic player if you want your goal scorer to be a St. Johnston player. Just put it in. It's not a problem. We hope it's wrong, obviously, but it's not a problem. If we see you putting a St. Johnson player in the comments, your comment gets deleted. <laughs> <laughs> so a St. Johnson player could score uh, at seven nothing, John. So yeah, doesn't matter right. as long as as long as we win. Don't care. I don't like it. Uh, James O'Donnell says, "Great podcast, guys. Four one to Celtic and Engels to score. Hell, hell. Yeah." Good luck, good luck again. Who was that, John? That was James O'Donnell. I've never, James I don't think I've seen James here before. Thanks, James. Oh, that's, that's another new one, John. That's, uh, uh, welcome to the channel, James, and uh, keep your comments coming, Paul. Thank you. Uh, anyway, he's edited that, so he obviously must have had another guess. Um, mm. He's changed his mind. Mm. Can I be you, know, you, know, you know what they say, John? You know what they say? Never change your mind. Never change your mind. Yeah. Depends what it is that's involved in it, but mm. I don't know. Anyway, moving <laughs> on. Yeah. Uh, we would never sell our club, says it will be very interesting what team Rogers puts out on Saturday against St. Johnson with one eye on Dortmund next Tuesday. And I doubt he will use the same back four as he did against Falkirk. And I reckon Duracell Boy will start. As will Kuhn, who turned the game for Celtic against Falkirk. Mm. Aye, I think both will start. Uh, Duracell boy being Maida uh, and Kuhn will start as well. I think, yeah, we'll have, we'll have plenty of pace in the team, John, and I think will be too much for St Johnston. And then we can worry about uh, British or Dortmund after the St Johnston game, John. Aye. Well, that's it. Um, but I did say that. It, It'd be interesting to see what Team Rogers puts out on Saturday against St Johnston because I think there will be changes. So they might play a full strength squad. And if we're maybe three nothing up at half time, we can make changes, something like that. I don't know. We'll wait and see. Yeah, we'll wait and see. That's all we can do. Thanks for the comment. Uh, aye, thanks. We would never sell a club. Um, yeah. Next up was Lisbon Girl. She says 3 1 Celtic and Ida to score. Yeah, giving St Johnston a goal there. Yeah, good luck. Lisbon Girl in the competition. First entry for you there, pal. Good luck. Good luck to everybody, as I keep saying. Rosemary says 4 0 hoops and either to score. 4 0 hoops and either. Everybody's a few for either there, isn't there, John, after he's bit by the double against Falkirk. So, yeah, yeah, good luck. Good luck, everybody uh, in the competition. And James Doran also says 3 0 Celtic and either to score. Yeah, there's plenty for Big Either, isn't there? You might not even, you might not even be on for the start. That's the thing with the competition. I think you're better waiting to the the lineups being released and then entering the competition personally. But um, you know that's fine. People can enter any time they want, John. I exactly. I big eat the breed, big eater. Yeah, yeah. So, you'll, you'll be involved somewhere along the line, John. That's for sure. I think so. I. Um... I think people are th they're going to rescue Ogo for the Dortmund game, John, and play either for the start. I think that's what the commenters are thinking. 
possibly we did that against uh, Falkirk, so it could happen again. Xander, the players have all had one week's rest, so it could be the same squad that starts, we don't know. We just don't know, that's it. We'll find it Saturday, I'm sure. Well, I would like to see a stronger team because to me, the league is all that matters to me. Oh, okay, we would all love a wee win against Dortmund or a wee draw against Dortmund, but we would all love that, especially with the funds that that brings in. But I don't know. To me, it's always been about the league, Xander. I want Celtic to win the 10 in a row, 20 in a row, 30 in a row, I don't care. Celtic win the league every year between now and the time that I die, then I'll die a very happy man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Same as myself, John, that's all we want is uh, we want that league trophy every single year. Um, greedy, I'm greedy, I don't mind being greedy. Um, because we went through the hard times, John, and that's uh, that's all that keeps me going. Uh, thinking back to the, the hard times, you know, and appreciating every single trophy that we won. Oh, I'm loving it. The banter years, the scalping years. That's, I want that to continue for the rest of my life. And uh, every Celtic fan's loving it. All the youngsters that, that don't know what it feels like to be a Celtic fan when we were getting beat, what it was like. The abuse we had to put up with after their fans. Mm -hmm. So, and you can see it every time they win a game against Ross County, that they're outletting our fireworks. So can you imagine what it was like when they were actually winning leagues? It's a nightmare. So <laughs> that's it. You know what I mean? It's payback time, Xander. Yeah, that's it, John. And uh, cherish every single moment. That's all I'll say. Um, all right, John. Uh, is that it for the comments? Because I'm going to have to go soon, buddy. I right, will just quickly read it. Lisbon Girls' poem, and that's us, Xander. Good man. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, go for it, John. Right, Lisbon Girls' poem, a second poem, goes like this Xander and John on the Celtic Forever pod. Talking all things Celtic, never a bore, never a fraud. John's guitar playing, what a sweet sound. Sanders' commentary, always profound. Podcast viewers are a loyal crowd. Discussing Celtic, listen in, oh we're so proud. Dreaming once again of going far in the Champions League, just like a shooting star. Our mutual love for the hoops brings us together in this podcast group. So let's raise a glass to Xander and John, the viewers on the pod, and fans in full song. Join the Celtic Forever podcast, you can't go wrong. Another classic. Well done. That was good, John. And well read as well. Um, profound, eh? By the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, uh, when you say we had to go, it kind of put me under pressure there. I'm normally like Rabbi Burns, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> no, John, brilliant. That was nice. Uh, that was enjoyable. I liked that. Thank you very much. Um, another poem for the Celtic Forever podcast. Um, there's not many podcasts that get poems wrote for them, John, is there? No, no, it's brilliant. I mean, we really appreciate it. Uh, I, was, I was trying to take it in and read it at the same time. It's, uh, it's a nice poem. Lisbon Girl a really, really good one. I prefer that to the last one, to be honest with you. Um, two of them are really good. Two of them are top quality, but uh, John's guitar playing, what a sweet sound. I, I like that bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's brilliant, John. Uh, well read, and thank you, Lisbon Girl. Once again, pal, uh, that's... I need, and I must take a bit of time to do that, so that's really appreciated by both John and myself. Um, thanks very much, pal. And thank you, everybody, that left their comments there. Appreciated. Good luck to everybody in the competition. Uh, John, we'll catch you on the post match on Sunday, buddy. I'll catch you Sunday. Uh, Sunday's under eye. Uh, looking forward to that as well. Good luck to Celtic the Mora. Can't wait. Yeah, good luck, Celtic. Hail, 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 hail. Catch you all later.